So thank you for coming today. And can I just say, before we kind of delve into my talk and my study, can everyone come and sit up on their chair? Take a deep breath in, and on the exhale, close down your eyes. Take another deep breath in, and on your next exhale, just relax your shoulders and relax your jaw. Take another deep breath in, and on your next exhale, just kind of key into where any tension lies in your body. On your next inhale, just opening up your eyes. It's very rare that during the day, many of us actually stop and give ourselves a little break. And for me, during my former years of university, I ran into an injury and my coping mechanism, what I loved to do was running. And when I lost that, I was suddenly grasping at straws and I found I was very anxious and overwhelmed with university. So in a bid to look as cool as some of these people on Instagram that could touch their toes to their head, I thought I'd give yoga a shot. And luckily enough, it was one of the best things I ever did. Um, for me, it's instilled a sense of calm that I was never able to achieve before. So due to having a very type A personality and loving evidence-based um, research, I really wanted to understand if this was something that was only happening to myself or if this is something that could be employed on a bigger level. Um, when we looked into the statistics behind the levels of mental well-being in students, we found that between the years of 2012 and 2017, so a five-year period, 42,000 students in the UK came forward for help. And of that, 20.7% of them were from Glasgow University alone. This saw a 75% increase over that five-year period. And what was most worrying was that they reported someone waiting nine months to be seen by the services from when they had presented. It was off the back of this that we decided to run a study. We took um, 15 MVLS, or medical vet, dental, or nursing students who have long been seen as a high-risk cohort um, through six weeks of yoga. They attended at the Glasgow University Yoga Club and it was 45 minute sessions every Friday evening. Before and after each of the sessions, they undertook this Hamilton anxiety scale. We, this was chosen as it's used clinically to try and define the level of anxiety someone is currently experiencing. I also really liked it as it's very holistic and it looks at things you wouldn't directly relate to anxiety, so it almost takes away a bit of subjectivity from it. Um, they also, at the end of the six weeks, underwent a questionnaire so we could try and triangulate the data and understand um, our quantitative findings just a bit better. Um, so the results that we got from this showed that the blue was before each yoga class and green was after each yoga class of the overall anxiety score, higher being more anxious. And we found that for each of the six weeks, that score was reduced. When, for anyone that's statistically minded, we did a one-tailed paired t-test and found that for each of the six weeks, the p-values were less than 0.05. For anyone that doesn't mean anything to, we basically did a statistical analysis that um, told us that these results were not just by chance and that the intervention of yoga was causing a reduction in their anxiety levels. We then went on um, to look at the questionnaire. The first three questions were Likert type scales. So that's when a question is posed and they say how strongly they agree with the phrase. The first was, I found that practicing yoga reduced my anxiety levels. 10% neither agreed nor disagreed, 60% agreed and 30% strongly agreed. This was very interesting as it links to other studies that we had looked into that have looked at yoga's effect on people's anxiety. One study, quite interestingly, used the physiological marker of anxiety, which is salivary amylase. So it's an enzyme in your saliva that can be raised um, 
in situations of anxiety. And they found that they were able to reduce this in participants um, over the course of practicing yoga. The second question was, I was better able to cope with situations which would normally make me feel anxious after practicing yoga. 50% neither agreed nor disagreed, 30% agreed and 10% strongly agreed. This was quite interesting as each of these questions had an area of open free text and a lot of them actually commented that they, couldn't un they weren't able to understand if practicing the Friday evening was affecting the ways that they were acting in clinics the next week, um, which is quite interesting because a lot of the studies that have looked into it, they've undergone yoga several times a week. <coughs> um, and the third one we asked was, my experience of becoming a member of the yoga club and part of the university sports community has been beneficial. This was very interesting as 30% of them agreed and 70% strongly agreed with this statement. This was interesting for us to kind of depict what it was about practicing yoga that was helping their anxiety as we know from several studies that have actually looked at social support and isolation alone can actually reduce um, the hormone in your brain, oxytocin, which is like a love hormone. Um, and basically that's also been seen to be reduced in depression and anxiety. So it's very interesting that one of the things that they were pulling from this experience was actually the social support that they gained from the club. Um, we then went on to thematically analyze all the other questions and open free text. The first um, were the barriers that came forward. We found that people were saying a reasons for them not attending yoga could be expense, class difficulty, time commitment or frustrations um, during the class. We then went to look at the physical well-being themes that were coming forward. And a few of them, one of the participants said, release muscle tension and soreness from long hours of sitting down, which for myself as a dental student is very interesting because a study has pulled that 70% of dentists will have severe back pain at some point in their practicing lives. Um, but it was also quite interesting as what they enjoyed from the yoga was actually the physical practice of it as well. And we know from other studies that have looked at yoga that the hippocampus after um, practicing regularly actually increases in size. And the hippocampus is very important as it's linked to memory processing. And it's actually one of the first areas of the brain that's affected by such things as dementia or Parkinson's. And what was interesting is that yoga, alike as this happened in a yoga study, it's also been linked to many other forms of exercise have found this similar increase in the hippocampus. We then went on to look at the mental well-being benefits that they started to pull from the study. And what was quite interesting was when they were talking about improving their concentration and their focus. And for us, this was interesting as another marker of anxiety or stress is actually cortisol, which is a hormone. And it's long been known that this cortisol hormone can actually affect test results or your ability to focus or concentrate. So it's potentially the way that we were able to reduce their anxiety was actually improving them um, clinically and their ability to perform tasks educationally. Um, another positive one was a lot of them came forward and spoke about self-care or mindfulness. And this is interesting as other studies that have looked at parts of the brain that are initiated during yoga have found that when they compared yoga practitioners or a group of people who are regularly practicing yoga to just your everyday Joe, they found that the amygdala and prefrontal cortex, and the amygdala is um, linked with emotional regulation, while the prefrontal cortex is related to decision making, were actually more developed or larger or more efficient in those who were regularly practicing yoga. And then we asked them, different things about daily habits. And it was very interesting that one of the things that actually came forward was 80% of people found that they had improved sleep quality. And this is very interesting as from a medical background, we know that it's not only linked to many physical 
illnesses, but sleep itself can be linked to many um, mental illnesses as well. So a study that kind of took an overarching look at many of the studies that had been done, so a systematic review, found that there were three things that they were pulling that were coming from yoga that was helping people to cope and participants to cope. And the three that they found were practicing asanas, so that's kind of the physical postures of yoga, um, pranayama, which was learning the breathing techniques as a coping mechanism, and dhyana, which is meditation. <clears throat> we then asked students as well what they thought of the current support system, and 70% of them replied that it was inadequate. So, really, what does this all mean? Means I was right. No, I'm kidding. Um, but it actually means that this intervention was helping these students to cope. And it wasn't only reducing their anxiety, but coming back with giving them physical strength that they hadn't had before, and also improving their concentration um, through managing this anxiety. And I remember being told quite an interesting metaphor, and it was to do with a weed. And when you go to remove a weed, it's known that you'll have to take it out from the root. But a lot of the interventions that we are doing, because we have so many people coming forward looking for help, is we are grasping at that top section. And we are taking away those that are coming forward for help and cutting the weed above the ground, what we can see. And I think what's very interesting about this study and what this study is really hoping to promote is that we kind of delve into the root cause of this and start to hit students before they're presenting, before it's a time of crisis. And it's something that hopefully can be employed on a larger scale and hopefully reduce these like ridiculous numbers that are coming forward. Um, and one more thing to leave you on is, this was the graph that I showed you at the start. Um, and what I failed to tell you at the start was that because of ethics taking a large amount of time, if any of you have been through the ethical system, you'll understand where I'm coming from. But this actually ended up being in the six weeks up to their final exams. So thank you all for coming today, if you have any questions. <laughs>